Good morning, Kahal Kadosh, Beruchim Abayim to everybody. Today, Wednesday, the 14th of Shivat, January 27th. Today's class has been graciously sponsored and dedicated for the Refuah Shelema of Yafa Bat Simha among all of the Holim of Am Israel. Additionally, we continue praying for the spirit recovery of Yosef Ben Sophia and Gabriel. Uh, concerning the class that uh, we broadcasted live uh, via itorah.com and uh, after the class was uploaded apparently it was a technical glitch with the system the back end of the system i'm happy to report the uh, baruch hashem itorah.com very efficiently took care of uh, the technical issue immediately so therefore uh, the class from yesterday is uh, up and running and uploaded via audio and via video. On a separate note, tonight, Be'ezat Hashem, will be the magnificent day of Tu Bishvat, Rosh Hashanah, La Ilanot. Uh, so therefore, we are going to be broadcasting live uh, this particular program through our synagogue's uh, Zoom channel, which you can take a picture of this, and you'll see the number, the Zoom ID, and the passcode. Be'ezat Hashem, uh, tonight, we are going to be uh, visited by Hacham David Yosef Shelita, that you saw him in the broadcasting from our synagogue, I believe, uh, on Monday. And additionally, we are going to have a, a cappella rendition by our Hazanim, Yonatan Hen, David Saliach, and a special appearance, all via Zoom, of uh, the Hazan Yehiel Nahari. And this is dedicated to the loving memory of the legendary Master Hazan of Hazanim, Hacham Moshe Tawil Me'elia Kohen, Mr. Mo Tawil, that tomorrow evening will be his askara. Uh, try to have, if you're gonna be watching live via the Zoom channel, make sure to have the basic items for two Bishvat celebration, wine or grape juice, and uh, something related to, to wheat, something related to barley, could be cake, could be a cereal, could be a kak, whatever. Uh, fixed dates, pomegranates, olives, grapes, uh, carob, adama fruit, walnuts, apples, whatever you're able to have, you don't need to have all these items, uh, although from a Kabbalistic perspective, you should have 30 items on the tray of Tu Bishvat to target 10 different types of uh, fruit items that are connected to different levels of creation, but this could be a bit deep, uh, so early in the morning, but the bottom line, the fruits are beautiful, uh, are symbolic, but the main idea is the message of Tu Bishvat, which our rabbis uh, pay a lot of attention to this particular celebration, because in a way, the celebration of Tu Bishvat connects to our life. A person is like a tree which is actually a pasuk from the perasha. Ki ha'adam es hasadeh. A tree needs to have its root. What happened in the Kiryat Yamsuf? So we know very well that even when it came to the major moment of Jewish history, the concept of Kiryat Yamsuf, the splitting of the Red Sea, it wasn't such a clear cut uh, decision 
by the Jewish people. There were those who had great emunah in Akadosh Baruch Hu, and there were those who followed after they saw the miracle. And this is hinted, by the way, in the uh, perasha of this week, when the Pasuk tells us, literally, very close Pesukim. One Pasuk says, Bayabo Bene Israel, and they came, Betochayam, inside of the water, Bayabasha, in the dry land, Vehamaim Laim Homa, and the waters became like a wall, Miminam Umisemolam, from the right and to the left, meaning to say the water altered its natural way. The nature of water is always to remain low. Even a water fountain, when you press the button on a water fountain, etc., what do you see? That the water reaches certain height, and based on the pressure of the system, the height could be three feet, four feet, five feet, but it comes to a point that the water bends and the water goes down. So we understand that the natural nature of water is to be down. And that's why when sometimes has Shalom, there is a leak. Not all the time where the water is there, that's the source of the leak. The, the water could be traveling from a different area and the water finds a way to come down. That's the opposite with the fire. The fire is completely the opposite. The fire always climbs higher and higher. And both of them, irrelevant of the natural nature, they represent two different ways of Abodat Hashem. One is the water, which is the, 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 the humility, so to speak, and the fire, which is the concept of spiritual growth and always climbing higher and higher. So this was one pasuk. Then a pasuk right before the shira, six pesukim later, the pasuk says, Ubne, uh, yes, haf tet, Ubne Israel halechu bayabasha betochayam. So first the pasuk said bayabo, and then the pasuk says here says bayabasha in the dry land, betochayam inside of the water, inside of the ocean. And the water also became a wall from the right and the left. So it says, I believe, the great Gaon of Vilna, a fascinating Hidush, that it says, look at the discrepancies between six Pesukim apart. In the first Pesuk says, and they arrive. Literally, they arrive, they came in, into the water, and the water left the land and therefore the land became dry and the water became walls. In the second, the Pasuk says, the Jewish people walked into the dry land that was inside of the ocean and the water was a wall. But interesting, the Pasuk makes a whole reverse. One Pasuk says, by Yavohu, and they arrive. Another Pasuk says, by Yelehu, and they went. First Pasuk says, Beto Hayam into the water, and then it became dry. Then next Pasuk says, into the dry land, and then became wet. Then next Pasuk says, the previous Pasuk says, Homa, walls with a head, which means a wall. The last Pasuk says, Homa, without the verb, that you can read, Hema. Hema means anger. The Gaon of Vilna explains Kahal Kadosh, and this is alluded uh, also in the Zohar Kadosh, when it talks about the performance of the miracle of the splitting of the Red Sea, it says when the miracle came and, and, and the Jewish people uh, uh, were about to experience the miracle, there was a debate in Shemaim. The debate was why we should save the Jewish people. Both of them were affected by idolatry. Regretfully, idolatry uh, was alive and well, and there were many people involved in Abu Dazara. So why we should save them? The Zohar Kadosh says that there was a debate in Shemaim between the Malach of Misraim, the ambassador of Egypt in the Shemaim, which the Zohar mentions his name, and the Malach of Am Israel, 
which is Michael the Kohen Gadol, Michael the Malach, is the Kohen Gadol, is the Apotrophos, is the guardian at Lydem of the, the Jewish people. So he requested one of the Malachim, go downstairs and tell me, what do you see? He went downstairs to the planet Earth and he went to the pyramids. And what does he see in the pyramids? He sees that there were regretfully many uh, Jewish remains there. And we know the source of that. That was the threat that Paro activated against our forefathers in Egypt, that when they were not able to deliver the required amount of bricks, God forbid a million times, Paro utilized the newborn babies as stuffing, if we can say such a word, into the pyramids to occupy the space that the missing bricks could not provide in a physical way. But all regretfully was very cruel uh, under many acts of cruelty that he performed uh, at least in the early part of our life in Egypt. Uh, and we don't have to expand any further, but once the Malach show the cruelty of the Egyptians, the Egyptians could not say any word against Am Israel. That the Midah of Rahamim, the Midah of compassion from the Jewish people remain alive and well. And this was what literally made the decision of the splitting of the Red Sea. But unfortunately, the Jewish people had different opinions. One opinion which is marked in verse 22 of chapter 14 says, Bayabo Bene Israel. There was a group of people, says the God of Vilna, that went into the water. Why they went into the water? Because they didn't consider the water an obstacle in the Remunayna Kadosh Baruch Hu. And then came the second group. Ah, okay. Look at the miracle it happened to them. They walked into the wetland, now became dry, and look how the water stood up. We also going to believe now. And that's what the second Pasuk says. They went into the dry. There was a second group who went into the dry land that was into the water. And the water was as the wall. But the water says, you only came to me on the dry land because you saw the miracle. It's like a person uh, 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 is very wealthy and gives a thousand dollars in the Aliyah of the Shabbat. That's beautiful, Hazako Baruch. But it's not the same that a person who lives day to day gives a nice donation, like a person who is Baruch Hashem very successful and is considered for him pocket change. And God forbid, I'm only using some simple example that we can relate to it, the difference of how the Emunah works and activates in the person. The most beautiful part of this was the Shira. Even the non-believers, or even those that had sefekot, doubts in their emunah, which our holy rabbis tell us that the lack of proper kashrut observance can lead to the person to have sefekot in emunah. And that's something written in the books of Kabbalah. And that's the reason why in the morning brief class that I gave in the Minyan, uh, we discuss about the traditions of the fruits uh, and items that we have in the night of two uh, Bishvat. And I mentioned a very interesting halacha. There are certain items that require checking. Checking for bugs. We know that when a person eats some item and it contains bugs, uh, the prohibitions are five. Five biblical prohibitions. And that's the reason why a, a person cannot eat a salad uh, in a non-Jewish restaurant. Many times people uh, in conversation, they say, I home, at home I eat kosher. Okay, what about out of the home? No, I only eat fish or salads. Do you know how many halachic biblical prohibitions are there? Just in the vegetable salon, five of them. 
Thus all the peripheral transgressions of sitting with Goim, the dishes, the cooking, the serving, and the fish, there is no less prohibition on that. So let's hope, let's use this forum uh, to reinforce the kahal, uh, especially for those that allow themselves to eat in non-kosher restaurants and they believe that an inoffensive salad uh, is not a big deal, but regretfully is a bigger deal than people think, which brings me to the lachaf today. So the lachaf today says that tonight or any time, but usually the day of Tu Bishvat is when people eat more fruits than usual to celebrate and to say the special prayers. And it basically, it says as follows. Let's talk about a date. I'm not talking to going on a date. That's for single men and single ladies. I'm talking about a date like the fruit. And we know that unfortunately the date could be one of the areas that requires checking. For example, another complicated type of fruit uh, is the strawberries that requires some ashgahot, some supervisions will not allow to serve strawberries at all, and some supervisions will do it after you cut off the tap, you sliced it, you check it, you inspect it, you let it soak. So basically, many people avoid eating uh, strawberries for this particular uh, reason. So the lacha says, before you eat, and this lacha is applicable any day of the year, but not only checking for bugs. Let's say that I like to eat, a, let's say a piece of chocolate, which I don't do often, but let's say that somebody uh, send us a tray of chocolate for the holiday, and now I'm about to eat it. The Lacha writes clearly that a person needs to have the food ready for consumption prior to saying the Beracha. Yani, don't say the Beracha and then open the candy wrap, or then open the package of cookies, or open the banana. Open the item first, and then say the Beracha. What are you going to achieve? Short answer, there is not going to be a sec. There is not going to be an interruption, even of silence between the Beracha and the Achila, because halachically you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to say the Beracha and eat the item immediately. So what happens if a person said the Beracha on the date and somebody says, hold on, you cannot eat it, but they are Majul dates, they are from California. So what, they are immune to, 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 to bugs? California has the highest case rates of, of COVID in America today, I believe so, if not one of the top 10 uh, and I hope that by Ezat Hashem things started to come down uh, all over uh, for everybody's well-being. So let's say somebody is telling you, hold on, you did not check it. So what do you do now? You said the Beracha, you have the item in your hand, and you want to eat it. You know what Hakam Abadir Yosef writes? In this case, take a small part of the fruit that most likely is not afflicted or affected by the bog question, and eat that. Then open it, check it properly, and eat it. And based on this halacha, another halacha came. Which halacha? If parents, very interesting halacha, if parents are allowed to send in the school lunch boxes items that require checking. For example, dates. Let's say that you send with your child to school, date. And I'm not talking about haroset. I'm talking about dates, literally the fruit dates, or strawberries, or figs, or any item that requires checking. If the parents checked it at home, hazaku baruch, not an issue. But if the parents did not check it, the mother or the father, open the tray of Majul dates that does not guarantee to be book free even though it has an OU. OU is telling you that basically they supervise this item that does not have any non-kosher ingredients, but that doesn't give unless it says every item has been inspected. But I'll tell you a secret. The only way to inspect a date is by opening up in the middle. You have to open it in half, 
and then you remove the seed unless it's already pitted, which they do it mechanically uh, to the center, but their item is still open. You know, it's still the fruit itself is still in a round circle. So you must open it in the middle and do a visual inspection, make sure that there are no foreign visitors and other or illegal aliens uh, of bugs department uh, that may render this item uh, forbidden to be consumed unless you're able to remove it and to peel it. But in the case of the date, if it's boggy, most likely uh, you will throw it out, most likely. So the Lacha writes that since children don't have awareness or understanding of what does it mean to check, even adults sometimes, but children, so they are four parents, cannot give to the children uh, fruits to eat that require checking before checking the items. Why? Short answer, because the spiritual detriment of eating something that has a halachic problem, like bugs, it affects the neshama of the person. And children are not immune, immune I should say, to this particular concept. That's why Hacham Abadiyah Yosef writes as well in the loss of uh, children and Shemirat Nefesh that the children also need to make sure that they consume kasher. Don't say, ah, he's a child, he doesn't understand. The neshama understands. Because at the end of the day, and I'm sure you know this, the food that we eat, it all not only affects the body of the person, it affects the neshama of the person as well. With that being said, we understand now what the Gaon of Vilna said, that the first group went in tremendous emuna. The second group went in once they saw the first group and the miracle. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. And therefore, Tubishvat reminds us of some of the components and elements that we need to have for our spiritual life. And yes, ki ha'adam et hasadeh, because the person literally is compared to the tree. Now, what the tree has? The tree has a lot of things. The tree has, for example, and you have some of my notes. First of all, we have the roots. We have the roots of the tree. Now, what is the concept of the roots of the tree? They go deep down into the earth. And that's what the Mishnah says. Even all the hurricanes of life. And I explain that the ruhot, the air or the wind that the Mishnah is referring to, is not talking about specifically on a hurricane Andrew, hurricane Wilma, or Hurricane uh, 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 Susan, the way they are named here in South Florida. It refers to the hurricanes of life. It refers to the ups and downs and tumultuous situation that a person may experience in life. And we know very well, Sadiq Be'emunato Ihyeh, one of the methods of survival that we have as Yehudim, that enable us to keep our head above water and to be able to overcome the waves of life is our emunah in a kadosh baruch Hu. Now, what else do we have? We have the trunk, the trunk of the tree. This represents the goof, the body of the tree. How beautiful the tree looks, how strong the tree is. That if you have strong roots, and strong tree, a white tree, that's an unbelievable combination. So our rabbis tell us that the trunk of the tree represents to the Torah and the Mizvot that a person does. The way the person behaves themselves, the way the person dresses, the way the person speaks, the way the person functions as a, a Yehudi. And then we have the main purpose of a tree <coughs> besides the environment and the tree, etc., is the fruits that the trees will provide. What are the fruits of the person? The children. The way the Gemara writes, Ilan, Ilan, Bamea, Barechecha. The Gemara tells a story between two rabbis and one asks the other, 
Give me a blessing. She says, Ilan, Ilan, tree, tree. What blessing can I give you? Pero teja metukim. Your fruits are sweet. Silcha nae. The shade that you provide is beautiful. Amadmaim obere tahteja. A stream of water is traveling nearby the tree. What does it mean? That the earth absorbs the water and due to the close proximity of the tree, this tree is never thirsty. The tree has an automatic uh, irrigation system. So once you have all of the above, what can I tell you? Ella yehira son shekol netiot sheitu sheitu mimecha yu kemotecha. May your offsprings be like you, meaning to say, may your children follow in the beautiful footsteps of a uh, life, and the same way with a person a tree when you plant a tree usually it takes a very long time for a tree to become strong with presence and even delivering into branches and leaves and fruits eventually it's not an overnight process our rabbi tell us that this is also the life of a person the person grows, the person goes through life, the person becomes bar mitzvah. Few years after the person gets married, the person brings children to the world. And through these years, there was a constant direct deposit into the account of the person that causes the person to become a good tree in the life uh, of the person. Now, one interesting question that was asked. And the question is, if the fruits truly will only come out and sprout around the time of Shavuot, that's why Shavuot is called Hagabikurim, the offering of the first fruits. So why are we celebrating today in Tu Bishvat? Today is only the planting. Today is only the rain that came from Sukkot till Tu Bishvat that's going to deliver the fruits yani, three or four months later. This reminds me of my childhood in the 70s in Argentina. I remember this vividly because I used to do it every year with my father, Allah Shalom, that around Hanukkah time, we will have to go to the Knis to place the order for Masa Shemura to arrive yani, two weeks before Pesach because he used to come by boat from Israel and it was like a 60 to 90 day journey. Today is different, Baruch Hashem. A couple of years later, completely different story. Not only that there is a matzah bakery in Argentina uh, for many years and a few perhaps but Baruch Hashem today with technology and transportation so you have matzah shemura you have Pesach grocery items but back then in the day we even have to go to the Knis Chacham Shever Knis Alava Shalom Yani the week or two Sundays before Pesach to pick up the spices uh, coffee sugar oil, kashele pesach, and other items. Perhaps in America, this sounds strange, but in South America, things were different back then, and there were issues of kashrut uh, all year long, even, in some items. So for Pesach, we used to place the order, and I remember because I was in charge of doing that, of not placing the order, of going to pick it up with my friends, all went together, and pick up the order and it was like an outing back then in the day and i remember the matzah needed to be placed by hanukkah so it says as follows that yes the purpose of the tree is the fruit but if i don't invest today but making sure that the roots are good and the trunk is good and the tree is healthy 
and doesn't require a refuah because trees get sick, by the way. We have a tree in the synagogue that needs a refuah shelema. Maybe it needs a shinui Hashem, meaning needs replacement. And you know the law is in the state of Florida. If I remove a tree, I got to replace it with a similar type of tree, which is an unbelievable lesson in spirituality. The tree is sick, meaning to say the neshama of the person, the essence of the person needs recovery. It needs irrigation. It needs fertilization. It needs pruning. It needs taking care of. The same thing happens to the neshama. The neshama is good. The neshama is pure. The neshama is inside of us. But if we don't take care of our neshama, nothing will happen. It will remain dormant, regretfully. And that's what we are investing today. I'm investing today or tonight in the day of two Bishvat. So when it comes Shavuot, the giving of the Torah already has a strong foundation that starts tonight. And therefore, our rabbis call this beautiful day tonight, Rosh Hashanah La'ilanot. The new year for the trees. But I'll tell you a secret. That this is a gift to us. The Bore Olam is pressing the button tonight to give us a new year. And you can use this as a reason to reset the button of Teshuvah. Yes, the fruits are special. Yes, the items of Israel are special. Yes, the carob and the wine and the etrog and the wheat and the barley and the figs and the dates and the pomegranates and the olives and, 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 and the grapes and, and the hadama fruits and the walnuts. Believe me, join us tonight. Every single item that we're going to be using uh, tonight, it has a power of particular item to pray for. So I would strongly suggest for tonight's class, I'm going to put again on the screen the information. Have whatever items you are able to have. Have next to you a book of Tehillim. Have wine or grape juice. And we're going to try to do Berachot and Be'ezat Hashem. The lessons of each item will be able to become an integral part of our life. And this is in a way what Tu Bishvat is all about. And there is no coincidence that the Tu Bishvat uh, element is also related to this Shabbat. This Shabbat is a mega Shabbat. This Shabbat, Makam Ajam. That's already a festive tune like the holidays. It's also known as Shabbat Shira, the Shabbat of singing. Why? Because we have the Shira that the Jewish people sang upon the split of the Red Sea. And we have the Perashah of the man, and we have the Perashah of Amalek. So it is one of the most powerful Shabbat. And on top of that, tonight we have Tu Bishvat, Eid al Jar, Rosh Hashanah Ilanot. So we are entering in a few hours to a mega 24 hours, and we can expand already into the Shabbat, 72 hours of a tremendous amount of blessing and godliness. Uh, etc. And we understand that there are many, many Kabbalistic and spiritual matters related to the tree and related to the essence of the person, which I believe we did, did discuss some now, but by Ezat Hashem will discuss man, much more tonight. So tonight the program will be a bit long, uh, but due to the fact that we have Hacham David Yosef and the Hazanim performing remotely a song or two each, plus the blessings, plus the prayers, plus the Tehillim, so it's going to be a beautiful night. Uh, I cannot compete taking a wife on a date, but maybe go on a date via Zoom, like some people do. In the early days of the pandemic, I spoke to some friends and we were talking, I said, what do you do? What do you do? Nothing, he tells me, one fellow. Dear friend, 
shall remain nameless. What did he do? Great idea, by the way. He told his wife, we're going on a date tonight. It says going on a date. Everything is closed. It says the date at home. They set up the table. They put up candles. They put wine. They prepare a beautiful meal. They dressed up to have a date at home. So tonight you have a date with all our friends via Zoom. But again, it's not only about the fruits. It's not only about the blessings. It's not only about the segulot. It's not only about the hidden secret of the items, but it's all about taking the opportunity of two bishvat to say to Akadosh Baruch Hu, Borei Olam, can I reset? Do you allow me to reset? Borei Olam says, of course. This is your Rosh Hashanah. Why is it called Rosh Hashanah? Usually when we say the word Rosh Hashanah, what comes to your mind? Shofar, apple dip in honey, tashlich, all the beautiful seder that we do. Like in the night of Rosh Hashanah, we do seder. Like in the night of Pesach, we do seder. In the night of Tu Bishvat, we also do a seder. But the seder may not have a mandatory halachic obligation like the matzah of Pesach and the four cups of wine. But guess what? It's another added godly given opportunity for us to strengthen our bonding, to strengthen our roots, to grow through humility. For example, whenever you plant a seed, what happens when you plant a seed? The first step of planting the seed is that the seeds decomposes and then rejuvenates, so to speak. So what happens? It develops, so to speak. You know what the decomposition means in this case? Humility. Humility. I'll tell you what I said in a wedding the other night. The Gemara talks about the splitting of the Red Sea, the splitting the Parnasa, and marriage. That's the language of the Talmud. The Talmud says, Kasha keri e parnasato shel ha'adam ke keriati yamsuf. It's hard or challenging the livelihood of the person like the splitting of the Red Sea. And then it says, Kasha zivugo shel ha'adam ke keriati yamsuf. It is challenging to find a suitable spouse like the splitting of the Red Sea. What does it mean? Why, we, why are we comparing the topic of Parnassah and the topic of marriage to a tree, to the splitting of the Red Sea? The short answer is as follows. What was the great miracle of the splitting of the Red Sea? What made it a major miracle? Short answer. The change of nature. The waters stood up instead of remaining flat. The mud, the earth, or the ground of the water of the river, the Viansuf, the Nile River, the, the Red Sea, Mehila, the Red Sea became dry, which doesn't make any sense. If it's muddy, if it's in the water, it needs to be muddy. But what the water of the ground did, oh, those waters are standing up, we also living. They left the mud and the mud became dry and that's why it's called Yabasha. Yabasha means from Lashon Yabesh, dry. So the water altered its nature. You know what marriage is all about? Change. Marriage is about giving the person the opportunity to change. Because it's not the same when a person is single or the person is not married. But when a person gets married, Be'ezat Hashem, just marriage and eventual parenting, God willing, will cause the person to understand that it's not me, myself, and I. It's we. It's us. 
and the person becomes more of a giver and eventually the person will receive and the person becomes more conscientious and the person becomes more uh, patient and has more tolerance and has a better understanding and exercises self-control and this is the reality of life when a person is single they have a different mindset altogether. Sure, there are exceptions. Yeah, there are a few exceptions. But nature, the, 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 the nature of the person has the potential to be changed and upgraded through the sanctity and holiness of marriage. It's not impossible. It requires effort. But the effort is a guaranteed miracle like the splitting of the Red Sea why because the change is what makes the marriage justified worthwhile and spiritually and emotionally powerful and meaningful so therefore I'll do it one more time just just in case if some may have not been able to write this this is going to be the Zoom ID and password for tonight, 8 o'clock. We're going to have a beautiful program. Try to have whatever you can to say Berachot. And even if you do not have them, do not worry. We'll say the prayer together. We'll read the Tehillim together. We'll sing together. And we'll have a beautiful program with Hacham David Yosef, as well as the wonderful Hazanim uh, that will logging in remotely. And then, Be'ezat Hashem, we'll see each other uh, uh, two ways, the way the Zoom uh, platform allows it to do so, and Be'ezat Hashem may be that the arrival of two Bishvat, it really brings great beracha and aslaha. Uh, since many uh, do not watch live this uh, program, I will read out loud the Zoom ID number and the passcode so you're able to log in at approximately 8 o'clock Be'ezat Hashem. The Zoom ID number is 8 two seven six five nine nine eight zero two I repeat eight two seven six five nine nine eight zero two the passcode or the password for the login will be seven five nine four oh seven I repeat the passcode seven five nine four oh seven again we wish everybody to have a beautiful day and we hope and pray that Be'ezat Hashem Yafa Bat Simcha that had surgery yesterday may HaKadosh Baruch Hu send her as quickly a quick and speedy recovery as well as to Yosef Ben Sophia and Gabriel Ben Lea among all of the Holim of Am Israel and Be'ezat Hashem they should have a refua shelema they should have a speedy recovery Arichut Yamim Beshanim Tovot they will all be blessed with long life, with health, with happiness. Amen. We'll see each other later on tonight. And have a great day, everybody. Koltu.